Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. It's Marie with Swipe in the City. Hey y'all, it's Brooke here. Very tired Brooke coming back from ACL. How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about, I mean, just like super quick. Um, I am too old for ACL slash didn't care about anybody on the lineup. So <laughs> uh, Relatable. Um, yeah, I this year was the first year. I've been going since um, about like eighth or ninth grade. Originally, She's an OG, y'all. Yes. I'm originally from Austin. And it was actually, like, so cute seeing, like, all the younger kids out there. And I'm just remembering, like, that was me. And those were other adults looking at me going, wow, they're so cute. They look so young. <laughs> um, and also, it was just my knees hurt so bad <laughs> from standing up. But um, it was really fun. I have recently beginning, I mean, uh, realizing just how much uh, movement and dance and also just feeling live music is so good for my mental health because I am so in my head. So something, anything that like gets me into my body is just such a like relief for me, <laughs> honestly. Um, but I mean, my, that's fair. Yeah. My favorite was SZA. That was, that took me to church for sure. I've still never, the, the song that you played, like I've never heard any of that before I feel, I'm uh, that makes me feel very oh, old I've got to get you to the chorus I think you would recognize it um but that was really great and it was just good to be outside and dance and uh discover some new artists so it was a good time all in all that's awesome um yeah like living I'm like I don't have FOMO about it so I feel like I can't say that I'm living vicariously through anybody <laughs> but like I feel like hearing your experiences like I might I, I went like <laughs> there you go you, like that's good enough for me right and we've all seen I feel like you know there are certain acts like Spoon is there Spoon and Red Hot Chili Peppers feels like they come like every other year which love it's fun but you know I feel like we've we've all seen Spoon a couple times so or maybe you have I mean I haven't maybe but, you haven't but, but other I've, people have <laughs> um but yeah it was, it was good you know I'm happy I went and it's been kind of a part of I think just like recovering from being burnt out from grad school and being able to just feel like I can take off and go to ACL like kind of spontaneously not planning <laughs> on going so um yeah that was nice yeah and you don't need to worry about work on Monday yeah like that... work is always so funny on I mean today I'm off because it's indigenous people's day yes um but like oh god especially when I worked at GoDaddy like <laughs> everybody would just look so rough that went and it was like <laughs> I went to bed at nine last night. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I was I was hurting a little bit um, this morning. It was funny because I was at my gym at a workout class on Friday, and one of the um, people that comes, she comes with her mom. She's a high school senior, and we like joke around that our trainer calls her zygote because <laughs> she's so young. Oh <laughs> no, he like gives her shit. He rags on her, but um, apparently, like some public schools are having their teacher and service days on ACL Friday because so many kids skip school on Friday to go to ACL That's hilarious. that they won't get their funding if to, if like a certain number of kids like aren't in attendance X amount of days or whatever. And so they literally get Friday off for ACL. That is the most Austin thing I think I've ever heard of. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm sure it's uh, only in, you know, a select number of neighborhoods in Austin, if you know what I mean. But, um, yeah, I was like, wow. Okay, yeah, I was not allowed to skip school for ACL. But I always what wanted to. I know. She's living her life up. Seriously. I mean, we didn't even officially have the Friday. Like, our prom was on a Friday night. So, we, I mean, we took that Friday as Senior Ditch Day. But, like, it wasn't an official day off for seniors, even though we had prom, like, literally at, I think, 5 30 or 6 or something that night and that's a very early prom yeah and I remember that's like distinctly the, like <laughs> that's like the lubies of prom time it's like, like going yeah. to get lubies at 4 p.m or something yeah. I mean it might have been seven but like when you factor in pictures and like all of that it's yes. like I remember like I think I had to be ready by like five or six and I very distinctly remember my mom calling the the school office and leaving a voicemail and saying yeah, my daughter is not coming in today. She has to get her hair done for prom. And <laughs> if you want people to show up, then don't schedule prom on a Friday. 
And what's funny is now they actually do do prom on Saturdays. <laughs> you, you got to. I like to think my mom did that. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, you got to. It was like a whole day. I got my, my makeup done, hair done, nails yeah. done all in one day. That's the whole fun of it. Like, oh, yeah. getting well, dolled up. My prom group wanted to leave like 30 minutes into prom. And I was like, I spent all day getting ready. I'm staying at least an hour. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Good, Good times. times. Well, that kind of brings me to... Just thinking about um, being that age and being younger and kind of being uh, inoculated with like adult points of view on um, like how you should interact on on dates and dating and your sexuality and how now as an adult I'm kind of forming my own opinions about dating norms and all of that and kind of our topic for today on um sex and dating and 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 first dates and sex and when should you time um when should you time with the first time with someone yeah and I think like I think it's really interesting because so many people especially women want rules like you want rules to dating and it like I'm sure we've talked about it before but like you know everybody wants to know like okay if you do this then that Right. Because that's easy. It's it's a way that our brains are going to think about it in a way that makes sense. Um, and so I was thinking about, it, like, my brain just got going about this because I started I started listening to uh, Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset. I was listening to her, like, memoir slash it's kind of self-help style. Yes. Um, it actually ended up being, like, way better than I thought it would be. Um, so that was a nice surprise. But there's a whole section in there on, like, dating and relationships. And, like, she is very, very, very adamant that um, you shouldn't have sex on the first date. And I think, like, her now husband, I think she said, like, they didn't have sex, like, literally for months when they first got together. Like, six months, three months, two, one. I don't remember I mean, exactly. See, this is me wanting an exact number, just like right? exactly, talking about. Right, yeah. exactly, yeah. I was like, what's the rule? I want it was at least three months, but I don't, I don't remember the exact amount. But, okay. like, I mean, in there, so that's her way of saying, like, it's a success story, right? It's like, yeah. we're married, we're happy, yada, yada. He said, like, that it was, that it made him more interested. Um, so I just think it's interesting. Like, we've been, we've, we've talked before about like the bachelor and stuff and like how reality tv can just like get you thinking about some of these different like conversations around love and relationships and sex so i think it'll be i think it'll be an interesting little combo yeah um do you want to jump into like our first segment here before we get into the meat and potatoes of it yeah absolutely um so today we so, yeah, what would you do um, is kind of like our first segment, I guess, since we've never really done it like this before. <laughs> yes. um, what would you do if you go on a few, like, cute little dates and then those dates turn into Netflix and chill? So, like, you're having a good time with somebody. You're probably a few weeks into seeing them. And now it's like they just stopped putting in effort. Yeah, I think for me that depends on like what I was looking for because if I'm looking for kind of a casual, no commitment, friends with benefits, so I feel like I'm getting some kind of like um, intimacy and also just kind of, you know, that physical contact like need and, and, you know, all of that and my needs were being fulfilled, then I guess I would just keep chugging along with that but if I'm looking to looking for something a little bit more serious like to date to me those actions show that that person got what they were looking for and therefore and they're not really looking for anything else because I think if if someone wants to date you I think they make it pretty clear and I think um just from being a little bit older than I was when you know we were going to prom and stuff like what we were talking about (laughs) earlier um you know, people can say anything and can be really charming and seem really nice. But if their actions are not lining up with the way that you want to date or the way that you want to be treated, I think it's time to have a conversation about intentions because 
um, you know, if that if that person wants to just Netflix and chill and kind of hook up, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make that person a bad person, but they need to be straight up and transparent with their intentions, what they're wanting, because if you don't want the same thing, like there's someone else out there who does want what you want. Yeah, well, and I think what you kind of like touched on there, like they talk about it on the You Up podcast all the time is like owning your owning what you want, owning your standards. And so it's like, if you want to be treated like a lady and taken out on dates, like you need to say that and not just like settle for Netflix. Sure, Netflix and chill is always fun every once in a while. But when it becomes maybe like feeling like it's in a rut, um, you know, somebody's got to say something. And it might as well be you because you're the one bothered by it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I guess it also kind of just depends, I think, what um, – well, I guess this is kind of a little bit of a repeating record. But, like, it, you know, it, like, for some people, you know, they are really into their career or they travel a lot or, honestly, they are just, ha- like – happy having something casual and that's fulfilling to them then then that's great um but yeah I think that's one of the signs I think that someone has matured is that they're not afraid to have those conversations and if you have those conversations and then it gets awkward to me it's like you shouldn't even be having sex with someone because you need to be able to talk about your intentions what you want and if that makes you uncomfortable then I don't think you're like a responsible person enough to like be having sex with someone honestly yeah I mean I get what you're saying too and it it ties into a lot of you know what we'll probably talk about today with like you know how long you should wait or should you have sex in the first date um I think something else to kind of think about like you're going on a couple of dates maybe maybe like you're going through something and you just don't want to go out yeah. Um, which I think is also, like, totally fair. Um, I mean, I think about Andrew and I, and it's like, I mean, especially now, we, like, spend half our time on the couch watching trash TV. <laughs> and I'm happy with that because it's, like, it just, it works for where we're at. Um, but then at the same time, like, I think we go back and forth on, like, making an effort for actually having a nice date. Like, he'll be like, let's go to, you know, Juliet, the Italian restaurant. Let's yeah. have a nice dinner. Um, and then, like, yesterday, we saw our first movie together. Um, <laughs> I was editing our college dating experiences episode, and mm-hmm. I, we'd already had the plan. I was, like, getting ready for it as I was yeah. listening. And I was like, oh, my God, that's funny. I'm about to go, like, watch a movie with him at a theater for the first time ever. (laughs) But, you know, it was, like, a nice little date. Um, You know, Alamo Draft House is wonderful. Yeah. It's not Amsterdam. Oh, okay. I think I – have I heard of that? It's the one with Taylor Swift, which is obviously why I had to see it. (laughs) Checks out. Checks out. Um, No, that's really sweet. And I think also once you've kind of got – getting um you've you had that kind of emotional bond develop and you're more comfortable with each other then you know I know both of y'all have also been going through pretty stressful times at work and needing to just have some time to um be together and kind of recover and support each other through that is also so nice yeah well and we were always kind of um like I, I think of myself not totally as a homebody, but like I do really like spending time at home. Yeah. So, you know, especially after a long day of work, like I don't want to get myself dolled up and go out to eat or go get drinks. Like I would much rather put my hair up, keep my sweatpants and my leggings on and like oh, yeah. just do something that doesn't take a whole lot of energy. But then at the same time, it's like we're still, it's not like we're just sitting there totally zoned out. Yeah. Because we're talking trash about the trash we're watching (laughs) absolutely a little a little escape okay I want to exactly I want to ask you a question okay um let's say you're in the camp of you know you went on let's say like let's say it's like I don't know three dates or whatever and then it kind of turns into hey like do you want to come over and then you end up just kind of like hooking up it's a Netflix and chill situation but for you that's not what you're looking for so how 
do you bring that up? And if it helps, I can come up. I have a, <laughs> I have a situation that really fits this description I can tell you about. Um, a couple of years ago, before I was in my last long-term relationship, I was going out with this guy. Um, we went to the roller derby once. We went out for drinks once. Um, we probably did a few other things. And then it turned into exactly that. Yeah. And... It honestly, well, this was my first hardcore experience of like gaslighting, really, before I really understood what it was. I was a little bit younger. Uh, before and it had a name. I know, <laughs> I know. So we, you know, he was kind of inviting me over. We'd hang out and, you know, we'd end up hooking up and it was great and we'd talk. And then, you know, I was like, well, oh, that's fine every like once in a while or whatever. But I was really at that time in my life looking to be in a relationship. I didn't just want to hook up. I wanted there to be an emotional uh, connection and also an attachment. Um, and this is going to kind of tie into what we're going to talk about at the very end, but connection is like an attachment to me is different. So connection is in the present moment that you come together and you're kind of present with each other. And then attachment kind of suggests more of a, of a timeline that there's that like ongoing, um, connection with someone there's that like association and intimate relationship which like right sex is not always intimate <laughs> but um you know I, I had brought this up with him like hey like it seems like you're looking for like a booty call and like I'm starting to feel a little bit like Chinese delivery service oh. and I was like there's services for that or the services. I was like there are you can hire someone for that or there's a bunch of women out there who are just looking for a hookup also who need their like yeah. sexual needs met and that's all they're looking for and you should go be with them because I know we're not monogamous I'm sure you're hooking up with someone else like we haven't really talked about it so like why do, why do you want to be with someone who doesn't want what you want. Yeah. And then he turned it on me and said, Oh God. Yep. Here it comes. And he's like, oh, I don't get like, why do you think I don't care about you? That really hurts. Like I, why, why don't I do, wanna do I do want to do something with you. How about Thursday? What are you doing Thursday? Let's go paddle boarding on Thursday. Go and did he inevitably cancel? Oh yeah. I go. <laughs> All right. So Wednesday, you know, it gets to be Wednesday. Haven't heard from him. Gets to be Thursday. You know, I'm trying. This is back in my earlier 20s where I'm like trying not to be like too needy, which mm. is so fucked up because like having needs does not make you a desperate person. It makes you a person with boundaries who like Amen. knows what they need. And that's a good thing. We get so pressured into being like that chill girl who like doesn't yeah. get offended or bothered by anything. But anyway, Thursday Hadn't heard from him. I hit him up. Hey, are we still doing what, you know this plan? And he was like, doesn't text back. Hours later, oh, Ugh. I'm so sorry. I fell asleep. Ugh. Let's reschedule. And then guess what? Returns to the Chinese delivery service. Yeah. And it kept going in this loop and loop and loop. And I was like, you know, I keep, isn't it annoying to you that I keep bringing up the fact that yeah. I think I want something different than you? Like, what are you getting out of this? Is this not obnoxious? Yeah. So... I mean, how it, so if this is the situation, maybe a similar situation, how do you have that conversation and maybe like in a way that doesn't make you feel totally awkward or like how do you make it smooth? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think you, it sounds like when you were bringing it up, like you're on the right track. Obviously, I don't know exactly yeah. how you presented it, but like, you know, you kind of just need to be like, hey, like this is what I want. Do you want to give this to me? Or, like, you are saying, like, you have to kind of call them out. You have to yeah. call a spade a spade. And, you know, that's – you also have to be okay with walking away from the situation if you're not going to get what you want, I think, is, like, the biggest thing, which maybe – correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. It sounds like that's where you – like, that's where the disconnect was because you were asking for what you wanted, but then when you weren't getting it, you were still – willing yeah. to continue which and I, is exactly why they do shit like that yeah because <laughs> I kept being like oh he does okay and this was also after months and I think now being a little bit more experienced I would have had a conversation earlier but how do you like how okay let's say it was really like you just went on three dates and it immediately starts turning into Netflix and chill like how do you bring it up because there is a fine line of like you don't know whether you want to date that person yet because you've only gone on three dates, but you want to like have that be an option. So it's like, how do you say, cause I think if you go in and being like, 
you know, I'm really wanting a relationship. If you're not going to give that to me and it's three dates, it's like, okay, well, I don't even know you either. I don't know if I want to be in a relationship with you. So how do you deal with it then? I mean, that's actually, it's funny that you say that too, just to tie to the topic and my weird obsession now with Christine Quinn, um, because I guess she was saying when like within, you know, their first month of dating, like very early on, he asked her to go to Aspen with him Mm -hmm. and reading between the lines she's like yeah he wants to fuck um which he did yeah and so she declined and I mean I don't think there's a problem with saying no I think like I think especially as a woman like if you've only been out on a handful of dates with a guy and or whoever and they ask you to come over and watch a movie or cook dinner or something I think it's okay to just be like, hey, I'm not totally comfortable going to your place yet. I'm not totally comfortable hanging out in that kind of an environment yet. Like, how about we, and then obviously proposition, like, let's do this instead, something out in public. Yeah. And I think you just kind of have to redirect. Um, And and again, like, you don't need to say, like, I don't want to have sex with you. Or I I, I don't want this to move into casual land. Like, just, hey, like, I'm not really ready to take that step yet. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I like that. Or just suggesting a different plan because that makes it clear what your boundaries are, what you're comfortable with without making it a very like, Hey, like I need to sit down with you and I need to talk to you about something, which can be a lot. Right. And which is not. Yeah. Because, because it shouldn't have to be as serious. Like if like, and every day when you're like communicating what you want to do, with friends or somebody else like it shouldn't be a big deal if you don't want to go to the same restaurant for example so it shouldn't be yeah or, or yeah or, or if your friends want to go out and you're feeling a night in you know if you're like hey I'd rather do a movie your friends don't make you feel like shit well maybe sometimes they do but <laughs> you know like it should be okay to just like casually say like oh I think I'd rather like go out with you instead and then yeah. that person okay cool yeah let's do that and then they they get the hint and can take your lead and if, and if they at that point are like, yeah, no, like I, for some reason or another need to do something in the apartment and I don't have any interest in going out with you again, like in public, I mean, then you've got your answer. Yeah. And now you're not going to like waste any more time, which I think is to kind of move into some of, uh, you know, like, should you have sex on the first date? Should you wait? How long should you wait? Like, I think that really ties in because... One of the, uh, I guess, arguments for wanting to wait mm-hmm. is if the guy is just in it for sex, you're going to, you're going to weed him out. Yeah. Because, well, and here's the, I think like, yeah, it, because if you do then like sleep with them and then they kind of got what they wanted, then they're bored and no longer interested. Okay. But that's what they were looking for anyway. Yeah. And if somebody is looking for a relationship and they're really vibing with you on a date and it happens to get physical, then you see what they do after. And then, you know, like, I think, um, I mean, I hate to speak in like blanket terms, but in my, in my experience, um, and uh, this is just my experience, but the guys really, well, I think people in general, maybe you just say people in general, they really speak with their actions. And I always think yeah. with dating, when you're trying to protect yourself and protect your energy to pay attention to what people do, as opposed to what people say, um, has been such a big life lesson, which I never would have listened to, you know, when I was <laughs> going to prom or when I was young, younger, because I thought, you know, people older than me, of course, like, didn't know anything about, guys, guys will do whatever they can to get in your pants. And I was like, oh, that's so antiquated. Like, no, mom. But I think it's uh, people in general who, yeah. who are wanting to, um, who are not mature enough to be honest with their intentions and what they're looking for are going to be charming to get theirs, I think. Yeah. Would you have sex on the first date? Let's say it went, obviously went well. Yeah, <laughs> You're not yeah. sitting there like counting the minutes until it's time to go. It, yeah, it obviously went well. Um, it's That's something I've really struggled with, honestly, because... Hence the topic. Yes, <laughs> because um, I think the type of person I would want to date is going to have similar values to me. And hopefully this is a value for the general public also, (laughs) but that someone still has worth after you sleep with them. Yeah. And I think the 
Madonna horror complex is something that is still so prevalent in American culture. I feel like very much in my early 20s to mid 20s um, before I was in my la- like last long term relationship I just got out of uh, fairly recently. Um, I really felt like guys were, if I slept with them, I was put in a box. Oh, you're someone I hook up with. As opposed to if I made them wait, oh, then you yeah. can be in the category of a potential like partnership. And um, so Which for- one made you feel like you had the power? Honestly, neither because I felt like I was having to like pass some test to protect myself and to be treated with respect. That's and it, fucked. You know, it made me really sad, um, honestly, because I felt like um, I was having to uphold some like male standard of like feminine, like pure, like virginal purity. And um, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I could authentically express myself because I'm somebody who um, – you know, I, I'm a sex therapist, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I, you're, you're not a prude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think it can be such a beautiful moment to connect with someone in that way. But for me, and something I under, always understood, so I was very confused as to why men my same age didn't understand this, is that you can have intentional casual sex, mm-hmm. meaning you can treat with someone with respect, you can um, hang out with someone or make dinner with them, and it doesn't mean that you need to be monogamous or get married or be in a relationship. And I feel like a lot of young men that I was hanging out with um, didn't really understand that. So hopefully right like the person I'm going to date if I sleep with them on the first date is still going to want to hang out with me and still think I'm amazing and see my worth yeah totally I mean I've had sex on the first date and had it not work out I've had sex in the or not had sex on the first date and had it not work out so it's like you know either way um and I used to think that like sex on the first date was like my choice and that like that gave me some kind of power yeah Um, and I think there are some people, you mentioned casual sex, um, depending on what stage of their life or if that's just kind of how they want to live, like they, they do find this empowerment in having sex and they are in touch enough, I guess, with the way that sex impacts their emotions. Like if you're the kind of person who's going to get attached the second that you like take your clothes off with somebody, then, you know, it might be the right idea to, to wait. Right. But if you're somebody that can just have sex and like not feel anything after, then like, or just what's have the harm a, in a little fun, or have those <laughs> mental like be able to like understand what the situation is. Yeah, I, I think um, you know when I was I uh, at a different chapter of my life, and I think you know casual sex was really empowering for me. I it was I think I was coming into like my. Uh, largely like sexual awakening I guess I want to call it but realizing how powerful it is to be a woman and how at least in a straight context like any average looking female oh sorry excuse me I hate when people say female um (laughs) average looking like moderately attractive woman can walk up to pretty much any straight dude with zero effort zero game and be like hey do you want to come back to my place and they will say yes and I think I was kind of realizing that and it was making me realize like wow I'm kind of like I felt like I was kind of hot shit you know and so I think I was having fun like feeling kind of like a goddess of like, oh, I, you know, could chat with anyone and they'd come home with me and I could have, yes, I could have like this wonderful experience and see how being with someone different was a unique sexual experience and getting to know people differently in in that way and explore my own sexuality was really fun. So I think like as long as you're solid in what your boundaries are and solid in knowing what this is and then yeah, it can be really fun. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Like every situation is going to be different. And like, I've certainly like gone out with guys and been in that spot where it was like, okay, like, I'm attracted to you. I'm, I don't see you as like my future husband, or like a long term partner, but like, I kind of want to have a little fun. Um, And yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's also been situations where it's like, 
mm, this could go. So Actually, no, I don't think I've ever waited in those situations. Yeah. <laughs> Call me a slut. I don't care. But I, I mean, mean, we're reclaiming that word, right? Like, amen. I, uh, I, I um, kind of use that word in so many ways. Like, I call myself a dim sum slut because you could feed me soup dumplings. <laughs> you could feed me soup dumplings morning, noon, and night. I will never say no. I love that. <laughs> but I, I think, like, also to be a slut, like, isn't necessarily that you're going to say yes to anyone? Is that you say yes whenever you want, whenever you want to, yeah. and it feels good to you, and it's going to be something that you're going to enjoy doing, and that you feel the power to say yes without running through your mind social discourses of what is and what is not acceptable according to quote unquote like society and I, I yeah and I think that's really a beautiful place to be is in your own authenticity of this is what makes me happy and if I find someone else where that would make them happy great and if somebody else has some thoughts about that who cares because guess what I'm not sleeping with that other person yeah yeah that's a good point I mean it's well it's not always just two people but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah I don't know we don't need to get into that all of that stuff but yeah. no I mean I think that's true and I you know back to like the rules thing everybody wants a rule they want to say like this is this is what works this this is right. what doesn't work and like I'm not going to say that like if you like the person enough and you have sex on the first date that it's still going to work out because like I mean you have to kiss a lot of frogs yeah. to like find the person that you want to spend your life with um but I mean like Andrew and I hooked up like on our, it wasn't even really a date because I literally just had him over. Uh, yeah. If we're going to talk about Netflix and chill, but I mean, to be fair, I'm I so, thought that I was leaving for New York. And so I was literally trying so hard to not get attached to him. And now here I am. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you're bringing up this story because I think like, you know, there, I think kind of the general theme that what we're getting at is there is no formula. There are no rules. I think it's what feels right to you in that moment. And, you know, I have heard of couples that sleep together, you know, on the first or second or third date or whatever, and who have a beautiful long-term relationship or marriage. So um, it's really a time and place. And I think the values that both people have, but please tell us a story because it is great. <laughs> it is great. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I feel like it's not like too much of a story, but like, I mean, I thought that I was leaving um, and we, well, we, we met on New Year's and stuff, but like. We were talking about going on a date um, on a Saturday, like, late afternoon. We were going to go get drinks at Lester Pearl. And I might have kept him up until 6 a.m. Friday night before, so we didn't <laughs> quite make it to drinks. Um, and that wasn't sexual at all. We what literally were you doing till 6 a.m.? Well, Marie? we were at our friend Kyle's. And oh, <laughs> I could see that happening at Kyle's. We, yeah, we were at Kyle's and we were watching fucking pop punk music videos. As, you, as one does. Um, and like, I mean, I don't even know how or why we were up that late, but we were. Um, and so naturally, like the next day he was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm down for the count. Um, and there was something else that, like, he, like, wasn't able to make. Oh, that was when he thought he had COVID, and he did end up having COVID. Um, and so we went on, like, we kind of had that whole group thing when we when we went to Malin's wine tasting. Uh -huh. So it was, like, at that point, I'd only hung out with him a few times in, like, our friend group, but we were still, oh, like, kind of trying to I didn't realize that. I, like, yeah. thought that y'all were, like, a done deal at that point. I guess I thought you were further along for some reason. I mean, we were talking. At that point, uh, maybe we – I can't remember now, timeline-wise. If you if had we, slept together if yet. If we'd slept together yet. I think we just made out. No, okay. I don't know. Whatever. Um, <laughs> my memory, like that whole January, every, all of that is kind of lumped together in my brain. That was kind of a dark time. But um, we, we hooked up, like, I just, I was like, I'm kind of sick of the back and forth. Like, do you want to come over? Don't you? Like, let's just do this. Not, not like that. Not like yeah. that impersonal. But like, I was like, I want to hang out with you like one-on-one -on -one and whatever. So we watched a movie that Seth Rogen movie about pickles. Um, <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the supermarket sausage fest movie? No. Um, there's a movie where he like gets frozen and then 
wakes up in Brooklyn um, in the present day and is like a pickle man. I don't know. It's a very okay. strange. I don't remember what it's called either. We'll, but we'll, we'll, a, we'll pin that. <laughs> so y'all had been hanging out in a group a couple of times. And then was this the first time y'all had hung out one-on-one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that's when you slept together. You watched the movie. Yeah. I was like, hey, want to come over and like watch a movie? And he was like, sure. Did you so, watch the whole movie or was it like within the first... Um, probably about halfway through and then we ended up going back to where we had, we, we were like, well, I was actually kind of into that. So we rewound the movie and ended up finishing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, we, I think we had kind of like started talking, like we were having like a, a normal, I guess, interaction. It didn't, it wasn't like, you know, we walked in and we turned the TV on, like right. we kind of like had a couple drinks before that and we're like, just chilling um before we turned it on but yeah it was probably about halfway through the movie um and then we had our first date after that um the following saturday uh when we went to the y'all out boy show which was also actually supposed to be like a friend thing like kyle was supposed to come uh-huh. with us we'd, whatever um and it ended up just being the two of us um which was great um and yeah, I mean, we've obviously, like, we've been on plenty of dates since. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like, we both kind of just, like, chilling. We like each other's company, so yeah. we don't necessarily need, like, all of the distractions. Not that the world is a distraction, but, like, you know, we don't need the other stuff, really. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's working out pretty well. So <laughs> no, y'all are, like, so perfect together. You're, like, one of my favorite couples that I know, honestly. Like, you're... Just like you're. I mean, I hate the word perfect. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't mean perfect like you uh, don't ever like have conflict or that you don't ever fight or that like you don't have off days or anything like that. But just that I just like how your personalities like blend together. I feel like you're very complimentary of one another. And it's, Thanks. I mean, you're cute. That's all I'm trying to say is you're cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So when But I mean we we slept together early on I guess is like the moral yeah. of the story like And you then know. did you and talk about it? Did we talk about the fact that we had sex? I mean like what was it like okay so after that night of the movies like did you have any conversations about like what you were doing or when did you have conversations about like hey like are we just like sleeping together or what up? Well like so we went to the Y'all Out Boy show and then oh yeah okay it was after um when we went to Malin's thing, that was after our first yeah. date. Now that I'm like putting it all together in my head, um, because it was after Malin's thing that I found out about my grandma. Yes. Um, and that she was, she ended up passing the following morning. And that was when I made the decision to stay in Austin. And I went over to his place and I like told him that that was happening. And I was like, so I'm going to stay. And I was like, does that change anything? Because, you know, in my mind, we were just being casual. Like, I liked, I really liked him, but like, it was just a casual thing. Right. And, um, and he was like, no, like, I want to keep doing what we're doing. I want to keep getting to know you. Like, I, I like this too. And, you know, I think it was probably a few weeks ago during, or a few weeks after that during The Bachelor, when like we had the the DTR yes so well I love that because I feel like this it's really helpful to have um other narratives out there that don't fit that stereotypical (laughs) like kind of you're stuck in certain boxes or lanes that I was talking about earlier because something casual can turn into a long-term relationship and that kind of reminds me of um, when I did my study abroad, my gap <laughs> oh. in um, Copenhagen, I was studying all gender and sexuality was the time of my life. Um, I mean, not the only time, obviously I did not peak, but um, I was talking to a bunch of Danish people there and Danish men and just asking them about what it was like dating in Denmark. And I was explaining my experience dating in the U.S., and they were like, that sounds really terrible. And I was like, yeah, thank you. It is. <laughs> Finally, like, somebody gets it. They were like, yeah, here we don't care. Like, a woman could have sex with as many people as long as she's having fun. Like, no one, no one cares. No one's going to judge that person. And with us, like, you know, we don't 
think of uh, sex quite so seriously. So we might, you know, sleep together fairly soon and then keep hanging out. And if there is a connection, then we'll turn it into a relationship. If there's not and we're yeah. having fun, we'll keep doing what we're doing. If not, we'll end it. And I'm like, yeah, that kind of feels like how it should be. <laughs> um, so I love that um, you included that part of the story of like you – it started casual, but then you got to know each other and it turned into something real, which kind of reaffirms that point that we were saying of there is no freaking formula. It's, it's the right person. It's the right person no matter what you do. Well, yeah. And I mean, I think mindset's also a really huge component of that because I, at that point in, I guess, like my, my world, um, I knew that I wanted like an actual partner. Yeah. I wasn't really just looking for like fleeting type things. But I knew that I was going to leave, and I also knew that I really, really wanted to, like, spend time with him. So it was kind of a weird whatever. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think, like, going into it with some sort of, like, I, I do have this, I'm ready for a serious commitment type thing uh-huh. versus if I were, like, okay, cool, whatever, I'm leaving, but, like, mentally I'm not ready for a commitment then it probably would have spiraled right Right. but like we both were in that same mindset of wanting to have something more serious and committed well and also like um with that kind of barrier of you are moving that also is such a great example of how casual sex can be intentional like I really like you as a person I think you're super cool I can't really have that attachment and commit to you long term because I'm I'm moving but we can still get to know each other, enjoy each other's presence. And I think when it comes to, I mean, this is a little bit of a segue, but when it comes to casual sex, I think there are different uh, styles of doing that. I think some people don't want that intentional, like intentionality. Some people are like, oh, like, you know, uh, I'll meet you somewhere at a bar. We'll do it. I'm not going to know that much about you. Maybe I just know your first name and that's it. And like, I don't care. That kind of anonymity to me is really hot and makes it kind of, elevates that experience for me whereas for some people like no that's not gonna feel good so um yeah I really like how you know you guys are a good example of how uh, casual sex can be intentional and then it can transform if you want yeah well and I mean I really do think it just has to do with kind of like where we were at and obviously like we're compatible so yeah being able to say like hey like I do still want to get to know you versus like the alternative which could be like you know I think you're great but I'm leaving and therefore I don't want to get to know you better right because I'm I don't want to deal with like when you're thinking kind of two steps ahead yeah you know what I mean and like I was just kind of living in the now um which is really hard when you have anxiety (laughs) (laughs) we all we can do is try (laughs) yeah but I mean I yeah and especially when it comes to a relationship like I try to not get too far ahead of myself because that's usually a really bad idea for me. Well, I think it's a bad idea for everyone because, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I guess as we get a little older and more experienced, um, you know, I'm kind of thinking about like, yeah, like, you know, I might be really excited for a date, um, but also, and, you know, I, I think I'm at a, a point in my life where I would welcome, you know, a long-term partnership as well. But also, even if I'm excited about a date and I enjoy hanging out with someone right off the bat, like, I don't really know whether I want to enter in a relationship with that person because I don't really know that person. I don't know if they have what I'm looking for. And I think to kind of go about it from that angle, I think is a sign of maturity that you're not trying to just rush into a relationship because you want to date and be in a relationship. Yeah. That's Um, huge. And so would you say like when you're talking, what came up for me was like, you're like, well, we were compatible. So do you feel like because of that compatibility between y'all that that's why it didn't matter that you slept together early on and that's what changed like the timing for you? That's a good question. Um, or your willingness to sleep with him early on because you felt that compatibility or what was it for you if you, well, yeah, I have trouble with self control. <laughs> Same. That's why so, I, yeah. yep. for me, it's like, if I want, if I'm attracted to somebody and I want to sleep with them, like I'm not going to stop myself most likely. I mean, obviously there's like, I'm in a relationship for some reason, which I actually haven't. 
Um, but if there was a reason and I wanted to have sex with somebody now, like I would obviously not because I, you know, you're in a relationship. I'm in a relationship and I love him and like, you know, whatever. And that's not like part of what we do, but I also haven't wanted to have sex with anybody else. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to like that kind of early stages, um, early days, as they say on Love Island, (laughs) (laughs) um, uh, you know, I don't like to deny myself what I want. Like, I'm yeah. a very um, sexual person. Yeah, and, same. you know, it, it gets me into trouble sometimes, sure. But, like, it's also, other times it's fine. It's also fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of am the same way. Like, I, I mean, because, like, I'm sexually active. Um, <laughs> uh, like, doc. yeah, I love it. Uh, I... Don't get naked with people and let where I, there's like a way wider definition of sex and just penetrative sex. But I don't get naked with someone and do others so clinical sexual activities because um, I'm going to end up wanting penetrative sex. And uh, yeah. so if I'm not ready to do that yeah. with some if I'm not ready to have penetrative sex with someone, then I'm not going to get naked with them because I have a body and I'm a human and once I get turned on I don't really want to stop yeah and same I was like that's why I don't invite someone over to my house or to watch a movie if I don't want to have sex with them that's why I don't invite a guy over to my apartment if I don't want to have sex with them because like unless it's an in and out like I'm like there's already (laughs) sexual like chemistry between you and tension like I'm gonna want to go for it and if and if like I feel I think it comes down okay for me the the timing of when I have sex with someone is how safe I, for me, yeah. how safe I personally feel with them. Well, that's important. You know, and, and because I've had, uh, you know, uh, a past of uh, several experiences that were less than positive, I'll just say, or experiences of sexual assault and all that kind of stuff. For me, it's real. I really maybe more than some other people need to feel that, I can tell that that person has genuine feelings for me. That person is has shown me through their actions that they're going to respect me and value me no matter what happens between us. And once I feel really safe and I can trust that person, then I'm I'm totally good to go. And sometimes just from a few deep conversations and I can get a sense of what type of person yeah. that person is, then I might feel way more comfortable having sex with them much sooner. I so. think that's... Like, if you want to talk about rules, I think that's a good rule. Like, assess yourself. How safe do I feel with this person? If if we have sex, like, what does that mean to me? And if it's all positive, then, like, you know, do what you need to do. But if you're, if you're questioning, it doesn't matter how many dates you go on with somebody. If you're on, like, the 17th date and you don't feel safe having sex with them, like, you shouldn't. Yeah, that's generally... You know know what I mean? Like, just don't do it. But, like, I think that's a good way to assess, like, how many... How long should I wait? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I think there's there's definitely a lot of people, um, women, who are saying, like, play hard to get, like, withhold, like, don't do it because that's all they want. Um, But I think with the right person, it doesn't really matter if you withhold or if you don't. That's my opinion. Yeah, I I think so, too. And I think... Um, you know, I've thought about that value a lot just because I think it, it's something that's so uh, prominent um, is I think element of mystery is always going to increase that allure and element of a little catch and chase <laughs> is always going to, you know, make things fun. Like, you know, that's why we like to edge our partners in sex. That's why like, we like to like yeah. tease our partners because it makes that anticipation can make it exciting. So I think we can ungender uh, that a little bit or um, make that less, I guess, heteronormative of, you know, anticipation makes everything fun. But I 100% agree that um, if it's the right person, it, it, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I mean, on that note, <laughs> yes. Um, let's 
let's do a therapist tip of the week. <laughs> okay. I mean, I think you've given plenty, but your official, official tip of the week. Yeah, my official tip. And I will say right before heading into that and what we were saying about like one good rule about like, you know, do you feel safe and comfortable is I think paying attention to your gut feeling. Mm. and what's happening in your body right now if you kind of do like a little body scan like are you feeling a gut feeling of something that's telling you no okay well also if you're kind of like if your body is telling you that are you going to be able to be present and let go during sex because um our partners don't give us orgasms we give ourselves orgasms by the ability to mentally let go and relax and be present in the situation and so you know if you're kind of having like a uh, 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 like jerky kind of like internal experience then then maybe it's not going to be very much fun to have that casual you know first date yeah. sex hookup so i will say that as well but my official official <laughs> therapist tip of the week is um today you know, research is showing that sexual orientation is so much more than what genitals people have on their body parts. And so if you're kind of listening to this podcast and wondering, you know, maybe you're at a different stage in your life or we're wondering, you know, am I somebody who would feel comfortable or who having casual sex is the right thing for me? There's something called a, um, socio um cultural or so sorry excuse me let me start over sociosexual orientation meaning that some people's sexual orientation actually is leaning towards the casual side of sex and that that is what fulfills them makes them happy um and is right for them and so there is a free inventory we um, love free <laughs> yes we love free um that was created um by a woman dr Zana. um at she was um leading a workshop that i attended on diverse sexuality and she um has this inventory on her website to figure out um if you are that kind of person to help you figure out what your kind of your values are and it We'll talk about this, and we're going to take this inventory next week and talk about it, but it measures based on three different factors, which is the desire for um, casual sex, the um, approval, like, you know, do your values say this is something that's okay to do, Mm -hmm. and also your experience. Is your behavior that you've kind of had thus far um, fit towards more of that end of the spectrum of the um, sociosexual orientation and the experience in your behavior is something that's more of a correlation but it's also a factor so um, that can help you decide and learn and kind of have a reflective experience of whether casual sex is something that's going to be empowering for you and help you figure that out and be really cool. So I'm excited for us to take it and for us to see what maybe we learn about ourselves. And, you know, if you take that kind of inventory at different times of your life, when different things are going on or you're at a different chapter, you know, your results may be different. Yeah. So I'm excited to see uh, what it shows us about ourselves and and to talk about that experience next week. Let's see if it changes our minds. Could you imagine? (laughs) We'll see. Um, (laughs) We come back and we're totally different people. Yes. Um, No, I love that. I'm excited to take it too. Um, Yeah, next week we're going to bring on a male perspective to this as well. See if maybe, um, we'll see if at least to them the rumors are true and that guys are hunters and like the chase. Um, we will, um, and dig into that. Hell yeah. And we're going to, we're going to, the link to this free inventory is a little bit, it's going to be easier if you can just click on it. So (laughs) we're going to put that in a post and I will put, um, Dr. Zana's like full credentials and like, you know, uh, her full name and everything on there just so you can, I want to give her, you know, the, um, the credit. yes the yeah. credit that she deserves this is I didn't make this inventory or do this research so anyway fair yeah we're gonna link that everywhere we'll link it in the body of this um description we'll put it on our social medias like all all the things um because weird links are weird um but yeah on that note where can people find you I'm on Instagram at most underscore babbling like a babbling brook my high school rapper name no big deal <laughs> <laughs> and y'all can find me at Marie R. Carlson across all platforms. And you can find us at Swipe and the City, um, also across all, all platforms. All right. See Cheers, you next y'all. time. Bye.